Hello, and welcome to ACMATH. Today we're going to talk about complex fractions. Specifically, complex fractions of rational expressions with x's and y's. First, I want to remind you of how you might have dealt with fractions like this way back when we were dealing with just numbers. Um, a couple temptations to avoid. I know there's a 3 on down here and a 3 down here. You want to avoid trying to cancel those and reduce those to 1 and make this, I guess, become 4 over 4. That's not how this fraction works out. Um, and similarly, you don't want to try to cancel out the 4s, even though there's a 4 up top and a 4 down low. Um, try to avoid that. The rule that you had for numbers was if you have a fraction over a fraction, think about how they're grouped. This is the largest fraction bar, which means the fraction 4 thirds is grouped together, and I like to add extra parentheses, like more than I think are necessary, uh, on the top and bottom of this fraction. So this is a fraction up top grouped um, together, and another fraction on the bottom grouped together. Well, we're dividing by something, right? This is just division, and division is just multiplication by the reciprocal. That's all division is. Remember how uh, if you want to divide something by 2, 10 divided by 2 is equivalent to saying that this is 10 times 1 half. Same thing is going to happen over here. So if I want to accomplish the division for these fractions, what you do is convert it into a multiplication problem. This becomes 4 thirds times the reciprocal of this bottom piece, which is also 4 divided by 3. Uh, now in this case they're the same because that's how the problem was written. When you multiply two fractions, remember you don't need a common denominator, but you do need to multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. So this becomes 16 over 9. And that same thing is going to be true when uh, those 4s and 3s are replaced with x's or expressions with, with variables um, and other more complicated things. So here's the general rule. Um, you know, if you like symbols, if you have some big expression on top and you're dividing it by its own fraction or by another fraction, this thing is multiplied by the reciprocal of that fraction. Now, it doesn't have to be a fraction on top. That's why I went with just a big letter X. It can be anything you want on the top of a fraction. It could be um, a number. It could be a uh, single fraction. It could be a sum of other fractions. Uh, it doesn't actually matter what's grouped together on top. What matters, though, is that you have a single fraction on the bottom. Um, there's a lot of temptation to apply this rule too early before you have a single fraction on the bottom. Uh, and that's one of the biggest sources of mistakes I see when people in Math 4 are doing problems like this. Here's what I mean. So we have 10 divided by the sum of 1 half plus 1 half. Now, with numbers, you might be able to intuit what to do. You can say, aha, 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So this is really just 10 divided by 1 is 10. That's the correct solution to this. Now check out what an incorrect solution might look like, knowing that the real answer is supposed to be 10. So see if I can convince you to believe this. This is, by the rule above, 10 over 1 times uh, 2 over 1 plus 2 over 1. So it's taking that idea of reciprocal and multiply and applying it over here. Uh, and then if we kind of do this out, now we've already made one mistake, so it's hard to anticipate what further mistakes someone who's doing this might make. Um, but let's say that they just made that one mistake, and they did remember to put parentheses here, which means they're going to remember that they need to distribute this 10 to both terms. If they did that, it would become 20 plus 20, uh, 20 over 1 plus 20 over 1, or 40. Now we said the original answer was 10, but somehow we've managed to get to 40 by misapplying or misremembering a fraction rule. Uh, you could probably look at this and think about other mistakes that someone might do um, instead of adding these ones and, and other x's. 
Uh, a little sidebar, you can actually apply the flip and multiply rule before you combine the fractions correctly. Here's what it would look like if you applied that rule and you actually did it correctly. It would become 10 over 1 times 1 over 1 half plus 1 half, right? Taking that all the thing in red as being over 1 uh, as a single group. This would be a correct application of it. Um, and if you simplify this, the thing is you're still stuck doing 1 half plus 1 half. So you still end up eventually with 10 over 1, which is just 10. Uh, so that's like the correct application of turning this into multiplication. I don't think that's really useful here, but if you did want to apply it, um, that's what it would have to look like. So try to avoid these bogus answers here. That's an incorrect way of solving this problem. So just to repeat, again, to do that flip uh, reciprocal and multiply shortcut, you have to have a single term fraction on the bottom. You can't have two things that are added together um, unless you want to engage in that little uh, other method I showed you before, but usually that's not very efficient. Usually what you need to do is combine these fractions. So here I have something slightly trickier than one half plus one half. Um, that one felt a little simple. So I'm gonna show you what you might do if you did wanna deal with this one. You would just copy eight over there. Um, remember that eight is really eight over one. If you're having a hard time seeing like what's the numerator and what's the denom denominator of this complex fraction, uh, now, remember that to add fractions, you need to have a common denominator. So you're going to have to have a common denominator of 4, uh, because 4 has a factor of 2 inside. So this 1 half, you're going to have to make that uh, 2 fourths. And then do 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, and that'll give you 3 fourths. So we have 8 over 1 divided by 3 over 4 in this case, which is going to be the same as 8 over 1 times 4 over 3 which is gonna be 32 over three. Um, you can check for reducing. You should actually have to check for reducing. Uh, it can be actually be easier to check for reducing in this step. And I know that nothing will reduce here because eight is two cubed, four is two squared, and three is three to the first. So there's no common factors. It's a little harder actually when you multiply those back together to check if fractions reduce. That's sort of a sidebar. Um, yeah, so think about adding the bottom terms together. All right. Let's apply this in a numerical example. This is a problem I wrote for a math team test a couple years back, uh, and it's, it's coming here to visit us. So we have numerical fractions inside of numerical fractions inside of numerical fractions. I'd encourage you to pause the video right now and just try it and work it out and see what you can get. My strategy is going to be to work this way. So the last thing I deal with is going to be this 5. I think in this case, what I'm going to do is stop talking and just work and kind of speed things up a little bit. Um, and you can, again, if you get stuck, um, just pause the video wherever you got stuck and follow along with me. Um, one quick thought about reducing this final fraction. Um, you might be tempted to, to say, well, Mr. Eck always says to reduce your fractions. So you might sit here and look at this, and especially on a no calculator test, you might spend some time saying, why can't I reduce this? Well, here's some thoughts. 30 is 6 times 5. 
So, and 6 is 2 times 3. So, there's only divisible by 5, 2, or 3. Well, 157 is definitely not divisible by 5, because that's a 7, and it's not divisible by 2, um, because that's not even. So, the only thing this could possibly be divisible by to reduce is that 3. Um, and if you remember your trick for divisibility, uh, you can do 1 plus 5 plus 7, and see that that's uh, 13. And 13 is not divisible by 3. Uh, so this won't divide by 3. If you didn't remember that, at least now you only have to check that uh, 157 doesn't divide evenly into 3, um, not uh, 2 or 5. So that's just a quick way to think about reducing. So finally, let's look at some rational expressions. Uh, and we're going to take these apart. So I've made some of these up. I've taken some of them from the book. This is one I've made up from my own twisted mind. Um, I'd like you to think about what a mistake that someone might make would be. That's a, always an interesting exercise, especially when you know that you're going to get the right answer in just a second. Um, think about what, what possible mistakes someone might make. I see this and I see an x plus 1 down low and an x plus 1 down low, and I expect that someone might, uh, in their haste, cancel this into maybe being like 1 plus 1 over 2. Or maybe if they're going to do something like that, they might also forget that one and make it one half or, or do some other weird canceling. Uh, it's not that simple. I wish it was, but it isn't. So what I do notice here is that I have one big fraction bar and then a bunch of other fractions. So I'm going to kind of put some parentheses or brackets around the different parts of this fraction. I notice that I do have something of the form of the form x over a over b where the bottom is a single fraction already, even though the top is a little more complicated. So I think in this case, that's what I'd like to do, is apply that rule that I've just been talking about uh, with you guys. So I'm going to say that this is the same as 1 over x plus 1 plus 1. Remember that that's in a big old bracket. It's the top of a fraction grouped together. And then this is multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator down there. So we have x plus 1 over 2. Uh, I'm going to come back and do something that I think you should always do with rational expressions, which is put in more parentheses than you think are necessary. Anytime there's a binomial like this in the top or the bottom, uh, or bottom or top of a fraction like this, put extra parentheses in. What that prevents you from doing is crazy bogus canceling, like, I don't know, canceling out those two x's. If you see those parentheses, you're less, I think, much less likely to, to be tempted to cancel things out because we have trained our brains way back when we learned PEMDAS, we didn't learn about fractions, but we did learn about parentheses and how parentheses are kind of inviolable, I guess. Um, all right, so we put some brackets around this. When we multiply anything, even a fraction, to something in brackets, it has to distribute to both terms in those brackets. So I'm gonna distribute that out and I'm just gonna write it out really long, no canceling anything to show you what we've ended up with. So on the right, I will have x plus 1 times 1 over x plus 1 times 2. So I have reordered the numbers a little bit just to group them together. Uh, then over here, the second matching is just 1 times x plus 1 over 2. You can probably skip writing this step um, unless you find yourself starting to make mistakes or, or little careless errors, then I think you should write this step. So that's kind of up to you, really. Uh, now I notice that I have a fraction. There's no plus signs in between here. It's multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. And I'm multiplying terms. Well, now these will in fact reduce to one legitimately. So what I'm left with in this case, is 1 half plus x plus 1 over 2. And now I, I feel like I'm done canceling, so I'm going to stop writing those parentheses. Again, that's kind of up to you. Now, you might say, well, that's pretty simple. It's done, but wait. Don't leave a final answer with two separate fractions, right? We have plus in the middle. Uh, I would like them combined in a single fraction bar. And guess what? We already have a common denominator. So we actually, this is going to work out really nicely. It's going to be uh, 1 plus x plus 1 all over 2, which is going to be x plus 2 all over 2. You might be tempted to go one step further. I'm not even going to say what that step is, but it involves canceling out or reducing the 2s. I guess I just said it. 
Um, avoid that. Remember, the top of a fraction should sit in parentheses. You don't have to write them, but you have to understand they're there. This two does not reduce out. If you tried to reduce that two out or separate that fraction, um, the way to, to do it would be x over two plus one. And to me, that's actually gotten less simple. It's gotten worse. And this is a more simple version. Um, the only reason you might do this is if you were trying to graph it, one half x plus one, and then understand the slope and intercept. Um, but that would be about it. Otherwise, uh, to me, I think in math four, we're gonna prefer this version as being the tidiest and the nicest for working with later. Here's another problem from the deep recesses of my twisted mind. Um, I'm gonna show you two ways to solve this problem. They're both really neat um, and both really nice. So this is the first one we have, at least in this video, where I have a fraction plus a fraction divided by a fraction plus a fraction. So one thing I know we're gonna have to deal with before I can uh, work with the, the two bracketed red terms together is combining at the very least this highlighted yellow area together. And while I'm at it, I think I'm gonna try to combine this top area together since I'm gonna be kind of in that fractional headspace. Well, I have good news for you. We already have a common denominator. We have x and x. So it turns out that you can just add these fractions. 1x plus 2x is going to be 3x. Right, we don't know what x is, but that's the fraction rule. It's going to work that way uh, no matter what. And 3x plus 4x is just going to be 7x. Say X a bunch of times, you're going to sound like, feel like Daffy Duck. Uh, it's pretty fun. All right. Now, I have a single fraction down here. You can use the invert and multiply rule. This becomes 3 over X times X over 7. And guess what? I hope you brought your canceling pen. Those are going to reduce out. And this is just going to be 3 over 7. It's kind of magical how something so gross with so many expressions... Uh, could have something like that. Now, I do want to make note, we had x's in denominators, so technically we do have excluded values. x is not allowed to equal zero in the original. Even though it simplifies down to three or three sevenths, if we were making a graph of this, we'd have something weird going on at x equals zero, like the original's not defined there. Uh, so that is important to just make note of, although it doesn't affect anything in your, your algebra, your transformations. Um, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, you want to see another cool way to do this? Now, this this one was pretty simple. So the way I'm about to show you is going to feel like uh, extra. It's going to feel like too much. But it's a strategy that we're going to be able to use later. So we're going to clear this guy out. And I'm going to apply the strategy of clearing fractions. And this is a strategy that works in, uh, it, I mean, it technically works in every problem, but there are some problems where it's really, really good. Uh, and this is one of them because I have similar denominators. They're, in fact, this here, they're identical, but even when they're similar, it's going to work really well. What I'm going to multiply by is 1. Aha, but not really 1, Mr. F. You are going to multiply by x over x. And the reason I've chosen x over x, and technically I'm doing x over 1 times x over 1, although you don't have to write that, is that I know division by x would be canceled by multiplication by x. So what I'm going to do is this multiplication that clears out every fraction. So check out how this works. I'm just going to do the top. Um, first and maybe talk through it and then speed through the bottom. So when I do times x over 1 here, that goes to both terms because they're grouped together. And so what I really get is 1x over x plus 2x over x. Well, those do reduce because it's all within each term, it's all multiplication. So this is just 1 plus 2 or 3. Now I'm going to show the same step for the bottom. Okay. 
3 over 7 was what we'd gotten before as a result. So uh, this can be a way to just do all this more nicely, and you don't, uh, I showed a lot of work here, you don't end up really having to show very much work. Uh, once you start being able to kind of think through that distribution, you can almost get to um, 1 half plus 3 fourths, or 1 plus 2 over 3 plus 4, this step, in one go. All right, so this is gonna be our next problem. Uh, I want you to take a second, kind of think about it, ponder through it, and then we'll do it together. All right, returning to this problem, we are actually gonna approach this in two ways. We're gonna do it with the uh, first method, the common denominators method. Then we're gonna do it with the clearing fractions method, and I'll show you uh, why I like that clearing fractions method. The first method, though, is gonna be the common denominators method. So I'm gonna think about these guys grouped together and these guys being grouped together. So I wanna add eight plus one over X. Uh, unfortunately, it's not just nine over X. That would be too nice. Um, you need to make this have a common denominator of x, and the way you do that is by multiplying by x over x. So this is equivalent to 8x divided by x plus 1 divided by x. Same here, you need a common denominator of x, so you can make this 4x over x. Um, if you don't feel like rewriting it, you can kind of put that in here if you want, uh, like I'm doing. Now I'm going to rewrite it though. So if I have a uh, common denominator, denom of x, I can put that down here. And then I have to add these two together so it becomes So I have something like this. Um, now, you might have be noticing a couple shortcuts. Um, we've been in every single problem where we've had a, a just double fraction with an x on the bottom and an x on the bottom. Um, it does kind of happen that these X's reduce out. And honestly, if you're at the phase where you're comfortable with that, you can think about canceling those X's. Although I see so many mistakes um, in this that if you're in at all in doubt, I think you need to do the next step uh, as well. Uh, so here's what that would look like. We're gonna convert this into eight X plus one over X plus the reciprocal of the bottom X over 4x minus 1. Oh, and I've done a mistake. So I was so excited with pluses that I forgot that when we convert to division, this is really multiplication. The thing that caught me was I was going to try to cancel, uh, but you can't cancel over a plus sign. However, you can cancel when you have multiplication like this. That's like the rational expressions we did in class before. So this is going to be 8x plus 1 over 4x minus 1. Yay, job done. Now that, again, wasn't that bad, especially when you can do the first step kind of just on the page where it's written. Uh, but I'm going to look at this with the canceling fractions method in just a second. All right, so we've cleaned off our problem. And I'm going to think about uh, using the canceling fractions method, which involves multiplying by 1 over 1, or some fancy version of 1 over 1. Well, what I'm going to multiply by is x over 1 over x over 1. Uh, you don't need those 1s as a placeholder, but I find that people think they're helpful just from experience, so I'm keeping them in. So when you do this, you have to bring this to all terms and this to all terms in each and then rewrite. So this becomes which simplifies to same as before. So this uh, thinking of a good sneaky version of one to bring in to multiply uh, or cancel out fractions can be really helpful or efficient depending on how confident you are with multiplying and how um, confident you feel finding the fraction that can, can make that work. Um, of course, if you don't see it, then go back to common denominators. Just remember to group the tops and bottoms before you do anything with that big fraction bar. It's like working from the inside out. All right, we have a few more problems to deal with. Um, here's one with X's and Y's. So a couple thoughts. First, I don't actually have a fraction in the bottom. So that's interesting. Um, you know, if you don't have a fraction in the bottom, you can't actually make there be a fraction in the bottom. And I think that might be helpful sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna think about that. So I have X, uh, Y over one. 
So this is really the same as 1 minus 1 over x times, I'm going to do dot for times because that looks a lot like an x, uh, 1 over xy. And that's nice because I've gotten rid of that complex fraction. I have to remember to distribute this into both terms. So that will be 1 over xy minus 1 over x squared y. Hmm. So I've gotten rid of the complex fraction, but now I have two fractions and I have x's and y's in both. These must be combined. This is not a suitable final answer yet. So just like if you had um, 1 over sixths minus uh, 1 over 12, you would need to get a common denominator, and one way to do it would be to multiply this by 2 over 2 to get the denominator to be 12. I almost have a common denominator. The only thing that's missing is one factor of x, right? x squared is x times x. So what I could do here is multiply this by x and this by x, and that won't change it, but it will get me a common denominator. So that's going to be my step uh, to combine these fractions up. So this will be... Again, remember, these are grouped together and these are grouped together. So do not be tempted to cancel an X out of here and out of there. It's not going to work because this X minus one is a single term that does not appear on the bottom. So no more canceling can be done. This is a good final answer. Another good approach to this problem is to group the top parts together before you do the flip and multiply. So we are still gonna think about this as being over one and eventually multiply, but I'm gonna group the top together first. Uh, let me speed this up and show you what that would look like in case you felt like doing it that way. And what I actually noticed doing it this second way, the common denominators way, is that that felt easier. So you may be so tempted to say, well, always I want to cancel fractions with some sneaky term, um, but it really does depend on the problem. Here, these were so quick to combine uh, and we avoided splitting into multiple fractions that way. So you may want to choose this way instead on this problem, just like before. Remember not to do engage in any uh, bogus canceling. We arrived in the same method here. Um, don't cancel those X's out.